What's the latest on construction and refurb around Disneyland? Well, there's more foliage added to Tiana's Bayou Adventure, some mysterious construction walls outside Little Mermaid, and an update on perhaps the weirdest refurb project in the history of Disneyland, over a shower. But first, the Mark Twain is calling, and we need to get the latest on the Haunted Mansion. We arrived on this day, on this Friday morning, to find that the big pile of dirt, the first thing I noticed, it's gone. Where it went, I mean, obviously somewhere else, but what could, what does that mean? If there was once a pile of dirt and now there isn't, have they displaced it somewhere? Have those guys put that dirt somewhere? Oh, he's got a big ruler out. What are they doing? Here's a look into, that's approximately the entrance area. When you cross that threshold, some new green pipes are on the ground there. I would imagine for the similar project to what they were doing before. And look at that. Oh my gosh. Okay. There, you can see the retaining wall. That is where the tombstones would have been up on that hill. This is the first good look we've had at that section of the queue space back there. I had thought maybe that was a new development, but I'm looking at last week's footage now. And that, that was the case last week as well which by the way while we're here let's talk about those the black tubes that we've spotted on the ground last week uh, i have been advised we've been able to confirm that those black tubes are in fact for drainage we know already that the principal cause for this update is to install the ada elevator that's been confirmed but they're also building at the basement level of the elevator two CM bathrooms, and a new large cast member break room. And that's where those pipes are going to be installed. So it's beyond just the ADA elevator. There's a whole situation that they're constructing down there to make it a more formal, professional, finished CM break room and ADA access. And as I expected, when we come back this week, as we return back to this footage, those pipes are nowhere to be seen. It's actually... I feel like they've cleaned this area up a lot. They that that dirt, that's probably why we can't see those pipes anymore is because that dirt that that big pile that we've seen has in fact been displaced and it has covered those pipes. They're now that 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 part could be done at this point. Green tarp there is the pet cemetery. There's a big pile of dirt there up front. Got a couple of heavy machinery working in that area. I I was just again, I'm shocked at how much they're doing to this front part of the attraction to the, I have thought, I assumed everything would be in a rear queue. Oh man. <laughs> but yes, that does look like they've cleared out all of that dirt. That dirt has been put back in the ground. Hey, they saved that tree though. That's great. Guys, there's a tree that has been spared. So I felt like I didn't get a good enough look the first time around. So we went back around once more. And this view actually from the beginning now, is all the way to the right. What you're looking at there is the exit queue. That's the mausoleum exit. Trying to get a look again at the front. Okay, there's, there's, there again is the mausoleum. So the, the boat keeps moving, so it's hard to find a spot to, to focus the camera. Maybe I should go back to the Tom Sawyer Island. There's a, oh man, they're doing some heavy digging still back there though. There's again, there's a construction worker waving at us and it's caused me to lose my horizon on the camera. But there was uh, an excavator back there in that space. So they're still digging. So the mausoleum looks to be spared. That will not, will not change, which is good. I, I'm glad to see that. At least something's surviving this. So that's the Haunted Mansion. Let's clean the pallet with some bootstrappers. If I had a dollar, I'd save a this pub. You're better free and single and you're happy when you're young. Stay away from sailors. We're out here on the rivers of America. Get another look at what we thought might be a coffer dam. Same type of situation that happened last time. They had the Fantasmic come back. They had to set up these coffer dams in order to work on some of those show elements that are embedded in the water. This area has gone through a few different appearances. Things have looked different each time I've gone through here. We even saw some giant tarps, like hanging from the stuff that was extending out over the water. And it's my understanding that they, they were attempting, in fact, to build something like a coffer dam, not exactly one, but a way to retain water so that they could work on areas 
but I don't think that it went very well because those tarps are gone. They were only there for a day or two. And I think they're going to plan B to try to figure out how to displace that water without having to put in a proper coffer dam. Also right down the way, the sailing ship Columbia was in wet dock on this morning and we got to see some crew at work on the boat. And it looks like they're just giving the Columbia a makeover, making everything shiny and new, just like the Mark Twain. Again, I would assume in preparation for Phantasm. And you can see it looks like he was sanding down that piece right there so that they can repaint it. And a lot of other areas have been covered up after having been sanded down and repainted. There you go. Yeah, he's just smooth. Oh, man. I love the care. Look at this. Look at that. That's just so great. I love the care that they give to just the minorest details on this attraction, on any attraction. They love all of it. Disneyland loves every attraction, and I find that to be terrific. We're going to go to Toontown next, you guys. Donald's Duck Pond. Look at I don't even know how else to, to, to set this up, to open this, other than to say that the walls are down. I mean, it's, it's as if there was no fanfare, no commentary. I didn't hear anything from anybody. And all of a sudden, here it is. The duck pond is open and the water is working and everything is there. It's, it doesn't look like a lot, actually, which we talked about, I want to say, maybe two or three months ago. How we felt like the reasons for the delay in the, with Donald's duck pond was, wasn't because they couldn't get something to work right. It wasn't for a lack of effort or you know they were being inept in some way it was a legal issue that everything was just paused or stopped and we couldn't figure out why and then last week i heard a rumor that it was because they were building they had to build a shower but i guess the city feels like because the the, the water comes in contact with the guests that that required a shower and i'm pretty sure that's, this is what it was all about, is this shower back here. You can, if you want, take a shower after playing at Donald's Duck Pond. That has to be it. That has to be the rumored legal issue that Disney was... I don't think, by the way, that it took a year to build that shower. I feel like Disney was in negotiation with the city, perhaps. It doesn't take that long to build something like that. I mean, they probably had to carve something out of that area. There probably was some demo... They probably had to, you know, redirect some water lines in order to get that thing back there and put it out of the way so it's not, like, part of the show. Because you don't want that to be show. You want that out of the show. So that would have created, you know, a, a, a lengthy time frame to do it. But I, I still, I don't think it took a year. So I feel like that there was some probably some negotiation with the city. And they figured that out. And then they built it. And now we have Donald's Duck Pond plus a shower. And with that... Here at Mickey's Toontown, I think we can finally say that it's finished. Mickey's Toontown is complete. My favorite places to be at Disneyland. Also, one of my favorite places to be at Disneyland is the Adventureland Treehouse. I, you know, it's it is a joy to walk up that treehouse every week so I can get this footage of Tiana's Bayou Adventure. I, I, it, I do not consider that a chore at all. In the same way that I don't consider it a chore to ride the Mark Twain once a week to get footage of the Haunted Mansion. We do have a new development on Tiana's Mountain. More color is appearing. And it looks like there's, it's not just flowers that they're attaching to the mountain now, but small like shrubbery. Look at, you see those? That's what those little knobs that I talked about, la was it last week or the week before, I wondered what those were. Why were those knobs there? Well, there you go. 
That's what they're for. They're shrubs. <laughs> right? That's great. They put some shrubs on Tiana's hill. And then here's just a group of craftsmen. Oh, we got one, two Imagineers and five construction workers all getting together. Very similar to what we saw last week. Trying to get this mountain to look just right. Hill, salt mine. We'll get back down on the ground to check things out, but first let's finish our ride on the Mark Twain, speaking of, and see if we can't learn anything new about what's happening in that first turnaround, you know, when the boats first launch. A lot of concrete there, that's all gonna get swampified. That scene is gonna look very green in the future. Very green and a lot of water. Look for a lot of water and a lot of greenery here. So here we are on the ground. We'll take a look at that barn first. They have stripped the roof as we saw last week. I don't see any observable progress in that regard this week. So we'll cast our gaze up the mountain. And there we go. There's a better look at some of that new shrubbery. It's got a nice layered effect. If you know, you know. There's Yeah, and there's the knobs that I was talking about before. Those are now covered in shrubs as well. It's almost like little trees. That guy right there. It's almost like a little tree. <laughs> it's so wonderful. I, I really can't wait to see how this, you know, how this all comes together. We're just now beginning to see. We're just in the very, very early stages of this still. The way this thing is going to evolve over the next five or six months is going to be something. Love to hear what those guys are talking about up there on the hill. I'd also love to know what's going on here with the side of the barn. That's been stripped for some purpose. That's the drop right there in the middle of the frame. We're going to try to get right there to see if we can just see anything at all. I do see some movement back there. There are some construction workers working at the top of that hill, but I can't tell what they're doing. And here we got some color. So far, what we've seen have been mostly green and white, but those that foliage is pink also. So we're getting a little color on the mountain now. And now we can just listen. Lots of ruckus happening here. Lots going on. You can hear it in the background. But you can't see it because I think it's all happening on the other side of that fence line. I'm pretty sure it's that. I'm going to assume. I'm going to take a stab at this. I feel like they're, they're it's gunite which is basically concrete. You, you spray the gunite onto your surface just the same way you would water out of a hose. But in this case, instead of water, it's liquid concrete. Look at that. The peak to the entrance has been stripped. But we can't see anything from the front. But yeah, above that scrim right there, peeking over the top, you can see that the, the, that building has been stripped. Actually, we saw last week, it looked like you could see almost like it was insulation. They've added a layer on top of that now this week through those trees. That's the barn, the entrance, you know, to the, the building that you enter when you go into the queue. Looks like that's going to get a new roof. And the backside of the mountain is now starting to get greenery too. They've applied that, that first layer, the first coat of green stuff. And then in the coming weeks, we'll see them add the same foliage that we've been watching them do to the front of the attraction. Oh, look at that. Okay, so that's the, this is the, you know, by the, where you get your photos, your ride photos, that whole structure that has been closed forever, that's been stripped too. All right, let's check out Tiana's tunnel. Oh, we got some crew doing work on the roof. I, you know, they're going to have to dress that, obviously. I don't, oh, I don't know what that stuff is. But they're going to have to dress that building to make it look more mountainous, hillish, <laughs> bayou-ish. So that's what they're working on there, it looks like. Meanwhile, there's some new elements being added. That looks, I, I want to say that's electrical. That little rectangular square and circle arrangement there. Pretty sure that's electrical. And there's a construction worker there, obviously. He's up to something. Oh. Oh, that's kind of savage. Is he? wonder what that's about. 
I'm going to be real curious to see how this develops. What could this possibly be? I want to know how they integrate this new steel with the existing log type theming that, that is there now. How are they going to put those two together? There's another one of those very similar, which I think is electrical components right there in the right third of the frame. So that's Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Let's get into the rest of the park, but first we'll take a quick break. Enjoy the Dapper Dan's on Main Street. Oh, it's a jolly holiday with Mary. Mary makes your heart so light. When the day is gray and ordinary, Mary makes the sun shine bright. Oh, happiness is blooming all around her. The daffodils are smiling at the sun. When Monorail it is, heading to downtown Disney. And things are being updated quickly on the backside. A lot of concrete and new trees have been planted recently. It looks like they've got some forms down there on the ground. So it's not just simple backstage stuff, but they're up to something there. And then obviously look at that. They've doubled the size or the height of that cinder block wall to Parkside Market. And they are fully vertical with new I-beams being installed there in many points. Two low I-beams here, a couple of mid-sized ones there, taller ones, and then over here, some very tall I-beams because this the Parkside Market is going to have multiple layers to it. So we're starting to see the beginnings of the layout of this new structure, of this new building. It's going to start taking shape here before our very eyes very, very soon. We're going to take a quick stop atop the monorail train station just to get a look at those I-beams again. This view is going to be so different in the coming months. So here's something interesting. They've repainted that temporary building at the entrance from downtown Disney. This is that structure that was supposed to be, rumor has it, being converted to the latest iteration of Earl of Sandwich. But the last time I was here, it was blue trim. Now it's red trim. I find that interesting. <laughs> Why is that even necessary, I wonder? Here's the latest on Din Tai Fung. Looks like they've added sort of a, a mesh-like surface to that part of the building right there. And then if we pan to the right, you can see that's a reflection. That's glass. Glass has been installed. It looks like on the second floor. And then if we slide over a little bit, you can see glass there again on the second floor, but also on the ground floor, there's glass there as well. And there's glass in the retail section, the opposite side. This is starting to develop, starting to turn into a place. <laughs> this, it's becoming a place. It is, we're not that far away, honestly. Summer, you guys. This is, we're, we're four months away. I think, from this all being opened. And there's Parkside Market. You can see the vertical steel there. Again, of varying heights. Those two tallest pieces from this angle, I'm going to take a stab at this. So what you're seeing there is the edge, the corner, right here. Keep going through downtown Disney to check in on Paseo and Centrico. We reported last week, you know, the, the theming elements that were being added to Centrico down here on the ground. We found more than just theming. Last week, we saw the signs being installed for Paseo. This week, we have signage for Centrico. It's in there somewhere. There you go. You see it? Centrico right there in the center. It's <laughs> Centrical. <laughs> and we'll get the latest from Paseo upstairs. This, again, is starting to really look like almost approaching a finished product. Look how far Paseo has come. And Centrico. I'm calling it four months. Let's go to DCA because th I, I may be bearing the lead here. I don't know if this story has, well, if it's a big deal or not, but there's construction walls out in front of Ariel's Undersea Adventure that parallel the original queue, you know, the, where you would walk into the attraction. 
walls have gone up running alongside that stretch. Now, what they would be doing here that is of importance, I couldn't guess. But you'll know that the entrance to Ariel's Undersea Adventure, the, the traditional entrance is closed off to, to regular guests. You have to walk all the way down this stretch here and then enter in the most awkward, weird way, both Lightning Lane and Standby. And this was necessary because there was no way to get Lightning Lane guests into the existing queue space at the traditional entrance. Another reason why this should never have been <laughs> a Lightning Lane attraction. But they couldn't, they couldn't send guests both. They couldn't split the queues. They couldn't split the guests into the space available at Arrow's Undersea Adventure. So the only way to do that was to send them in the back way, which is awful. It really is. Awful. I don't, I don't have any other words. I, I could think of worse words, but that's the best word I could use to describe my disappointment and how all of this has been handled. Um, good news is that it hasn't exactly destroyed the standby experience, but it's just wrong. Guess shouldn't have to enter from the back like that. So what I'm hoping is that we can see something from the Pixar Pal Around. We made it all the way to the top. I didn't have grandpa with me on this day. I wasn't prepared for this when I was filming on this day, so I had to do this with my phone. So there's the walls. And it normally in the situation like this, it's because they're taking out concrete. They're gonna redo concrete. And I would expect if they were modifying the queue that those green rails would be removed in order to do what? To widen them, I guess? I see somebody down there, but he doesn't look like a construction worker. He doesn't have a hard hat, so I'm not, I don't think they're actively doing anything at the moment. It is simply too soon to tell what it is they could be doing. I want to be optimistic and say, yes, they're building a dedicated lightning lane entrance. But at the same time, that saddens me if that is what they're doing. Because that also means that they are committed they're locked in on, on Lightning Lane. Locked in on Lightning Lane for Arrow's Undersea Adventure. And locked in on Lightning Lane Genie Plus in general. If, they're gonna, if they are going to modify a building in order to accommodate Lightning Lane, that means Lightning Lane is here to stay. Redwood Creek Challenge. Bad news for those hoping that this was going to be something avatar related i had you know my radar up the last couple of weeks but as i understand it this is technical in nature not a reefer but something that they need to fix but it's, it's non-show it's not guest facing and that's why it's going to take a little while because they have to probably dig something up and and fix stuff underground below grade but i don't think that this is at all related to avatar anymore those walls were up the day that I shot this footage, but I came back the next day and the lockers have now been revealed. The, these are the new lockers across from Russian River Outfitters at Grizzly River Run. And they are there to replace the old locker situation that is being turned into a DVC space. No progress to report from here. As of now, still dirt and unfinished space. Lockers are open, but we still have to wait for the new Disney Vacation Club Magic, which is coming soon. And that is our update from the Disneyland Resort. We don't have any updates for you from the Magic from Walt Disney World this week. So let's take a look at what's happening at Epic Universe. These photos, courtesy of Bio Reconstruct on Twitter, who was going to go down in history as one of the most important figures <laughs> in the history of theme park construction reporting. Bio Reconstruct. This is a long view of the entire Epic Universe site. There's the Grand Helios Hotel in the top left corner. Right next to that, that's the, the Harry Potter themed land, the Ministry of Magic, to its left, our right, Starfall Racers. 
and lots more. Actually, let's just take a quicker look or a closer look at some of those features. There's the Grand Helios Hotel, an in-property hotel. Guests can stay there, walk out that gate or walk out the hotel doors and you're in the park. I find that to be epic, if you don't mind my saying. This is the that dome structure in the middle top of the, of the hotel. Here's a close-up look at that dome structure. There's the portal to the dark universe. That's the classic monsters themed land, you know, Frankenstein, werewolf, Dracula, etc. That's the manor on the right. And that's the werewolf coaster in the top left there. There's the manor again, closer look. Bio Reconstruct uh, pointed out in his tweet on this that these areas that are covered are going to eventually reveal vines that are growing they haven't gotten their color yet, but that does look like those are, that's what those are, vines. That's part of the track there for the werewolf coaster. To the right of that track, our right, is the queue space, the exterior queue space. Still trying to figure out what this area here is that's going to wind up being something because that's just framework. But we saw framework like that, I want to say, two, uh, a month ago almost, so they haven't really done much on that. And here's something I just can't get enough of. I love these portals. I'm really enjoying that. But this one specifically, it's like Frankenstein's, the conduit through which he collects the power, the, you know, the, the lightning bolt that it attracts the lightning and energizes or provides power to Frankenstein's monster. But I think that's really cool. A great way for guests to enter this land. There's the portal to How to Train Your Dragon. Yes, that, that franchise is getting its own land. And that's the entry to this land. Each land has a portal-like entrance, very similar to the way you enter Nintendo World at Universal Studios. This is a really brilliant looking space. I don't, I'm not familiar with the How to Train Your Dragon. I've seen the first film, but I haven't seen any of the sequels. So I'm not familiar with all of this imagery is, but... I like the way it looks on the ground here in this space. It's getting better and better every time we look at it. But this is a fully realized, fully developed or will be land. I, it just, it looks terrific. That's the coaster, the How to Train Your Dragon coaster. They're going to have a, like a, a carnival type ride there in the top left of the frame. That's like, a, it's a spinner. And next to that is the roller coaster. And that roller coaster goes through a grandstand. And you're going to go, this, that's what this is right here. It's a grandstand. You're going to go through that with cheering fans on it, I would assume. There's more of that coaster and more of the land from a little bit of a longer perspective. You can kind of see quite a bit of that. And there you can also see the Starfall Racers track right there in the top left of the frame. This is a boat ride. So now we're on our third ride, our third attraction now in this land. This is a boat ride. And we remarked about the, the interesting sort of 2D images that are being installed here. As I've come to find out, this is guests are going to be in a boat, but they're going to be firing. You're going to be shooting water at targets. You'll be moving around. And these, you know, those, a lot of those white spaces, I'm going to assume the reason why they look like that is because they're, they're interactive. I mean, they're going to be themed eventually. But guess we'll be firing water type cannons, I would imagine, or, or not cannons, but pistols or something, trying to score points. That's an interesting concept for a ride. There's a portal entrance to Super Nintendo World. There's, you can see the color. Isn't that interesting? It's almost entirely gray, but then color is starting to sort of make its presence known in this land. And even more so with the Yoshi. The Yoshi is, that's the people mover, basically. They have a people mover. It's a Yoshi mover. The color looks great there. This is the Donkey Kong roller coaster. We've talked about this in the past. It has that simulated track jumping feature. The track you're seeing here, this track, is not real. That's fake track. It looks like it's real, but it's not. Or it wants to be real. <laughs> this space here, Bio Reconstructed mentioned in this tweet on this one, that where this scaffolding is, is going to be 
a very large waterfall and it's going to feed you can see where it's feed where the water will feed into this little river type space here but there will be a because you know the donkey kong video game his universe is in a jungle so they're going to make this very jungle ific now here's what here's an example of a different example of how the track is broken quote unquote you can see there's a track here on the left and a track on the bottom and a track on the top and it's and it's broken it, Instead of a simulated jump, in this case, it's going to be a simulation of guests skimming across the water. This is going to have water on it. I would imagine the effect is similar to Dash on Incredicoaster. You're going to skim across that water and then reconnect with the track on the other side. Now, there's more of Yoshi. That wonderful splashes of color. Give my right arm to ride the Yoshi ride right now. <laughs> There's the portal entry to the Harry Potter themed land, the Ministry of Magic. That's an Elder Wand at the entrance. And this is sort of the, the cityscape, the downtown area of the Ministry of Magic. Very claustrophobic space, in my opinion, which, you know, I think is effective. Look how close all that is together. There will be an attraction inside that building. Very long view of that space. That's that's the Ministry of Magic there again. That whole area right there. And there again to the right, to its right, well, our right, is the hotel, the Grand Helios Hotel. <laughs> and that's a whole lot of Starfall roller coaster right there in that frame. I mean, I don't what what can you say? That's a heck of a lot. That's terrific, and that is our show. That's our construction report for this week. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this show and want to show your support, please do consider joining our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash freshbaked. You can follow us on Instagram at underscore freshbaked and on TikTok at freshbakedisney. Otherwise, thanks again for watching, everybody. We love you. Be safe out there. Be kind to one another. And freshbaked. <laughs>